Hey everyone. Oh, I haven't started yet. Yeah, there we go. So, yep, uh, welcome. Um, we're gonna kind of hang out for just another minute, uh, was we're we're about a minute early. Um, but for for those of you who have jumped on uh, in advance, thank you. Um, and and we'll go back over this here in just a minute. But just so that you can get um, up to speed, we have a. 3x long streamer hook on the vise. Don't worry if you don't have a 3x long. Uh, really, any streamer uh, hook will work just fine. And uh, I am using specifically a Daiichi 2461 size 4. Um, use whatever you have. Uh, wide gap hooks are great. Um, if you've got a 3x long, even better because I think it gives the right profile uh, for what we're going to be tying tonight. Um, but if you have a 4x long, that'll work just fine. If you have you know something shorter again whatever whatever you have give it a go and then feel free to share your results with us if you do tie along you know live or if uh, you tie along a little bit later so and and if you're uh, if you're signed in and you feel like doing so feel free to give us a chat uh, and say hello so that we know that you guys are on hopefully you know this this reaches everyone um, uh, safely and uh, that everyone is, is doing well. So, all right. Uh, so let's let's introduce what we're tying tonight. So we're going to be tying terrestrials, and specifically, we're going to be focusing on a pretty easy foam pattern for tying a cicada. And uh, the reason why we're focusing on the cicada is that this year, uh, we in certain parts, especially here in, in Virginia, but throughout the country, there. Um, the 17 year cicada will be emerging and so we will be inundated with these things. I don't know how bad it will be here in Charlottesville, but I know certain parts of Virginia will be so filthy with them and you'll want to have something like this in your fly box to cast out because you know when these, these big hatches occur, uh, the fish just go crazy and that's what they key in on and, that, and that's what every, um, all of them like to eat. So pretty easy pattern. You can see here we have a little bit of shininess underneath. Um, some kind of orange banding, separation of, of the body, um, real easy and, and simple and, and yet effective as well. We'll also notice it looks a little bit thicker. Don't worry, uh, this is being tied with two millimeter foam. So um, I'll show you how we can triple that up and, and get a thicker body uh, that we would expect for one of the bigger bugs. Uh, and then, because these are, are pretty quick to tie, we're going to do a, a two fly special tonight. Uh, and we're going to tie a little grasshopper as well. It's basically the exact same fly uh, as what I just showed you, only um, slightly different colors and, and a couple different uh, changes. And, and you can have a grasshopper versus a cicada. Uh, so so kind of neat. Uh, you know, once you kind of learn this, you can really imitate a, a wide variety of, of larger insects and terrestrials. Okay, so we have our hook on our vise. And this is a, uh, like I said, this is a, a, a Daiichi 2461. Um, and this is in a size four. And again, just to reiterate, because I know a couple people have joined us uh, since I, I said this before, any streamer hook you have, just fine. You know, tie with what you have and, uh, and, and you can make it work. This is a 3X long hook. I like 3X long because it gives me the body shape and proportions that I'm looking for you know, when I tie one of these little terrestrial bugs. If you have a 4X long, don't worry, it'll work just fine. If you have something smaller, don't worry. Um, you can extend the body. In, in fact, um, you, know, you can see on here, if you look very carefully, uh, the little um, butt end of this, this fly sticks up actually past the hook. So you can make a little terrestrial pattern longer if you need to, if you, if you don't have a longer hook. Um, like this this 3x so let's get into it first thing i'm going to do i'm going to uh, put on some thread i like a um, uh, high visibility orange for this because i think it contrasts the black really nice on a cicada um, plus cicadas have a little bit of natural banding to them and i'm going to lay a thread base all the way down tie in whatever color you have you know whatever whatever you have will work just fine um, but we're going to go ahead and start working our way all the way down the hook shank And I'm tying all the way back to really where that barb is, right here. And um, then what I'm going to do 
is open spiral forward. And the reason for this is it's giving us a, um, a thread base that has some texture to it. And so materials are gonna grip a little easier on this because one of the, the most challenging things about tying a kind of high profile foam bug like this is it's gonna have a tendency to wanna to spin on you. And so we wanna make sure that we've got a really solid base that when materials go on, it can really uh, cinch tight on. And we're, we're gonna play around with some super glue as well to kind of help prevent that uh, from occurring. So the next thing we need to do is tie in our chenille. And to do this, again, this is the same as any chenille, right? So we're just gonna pinch off just the front end just to expose that thread. And oh, by the way, if you notice, um, I don't know, I think some of you have seen how I do this. I actually take my packet of chenille and I cut a nice long kind of uh, slit down the side. And what this does is it makes it really easy for me to hang it and it doesn't come undone. So the packets come with this little groove right here, but if you have that and you just hit it, it's easy for that to suddenly fall and start unwinding. So really easy kind of tip and trick to, to keep that from unraveling on you and make it a little bit uh, easier to manage. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and tie this in and I'm not worried about having my chenille all the way up the hook eye. Is what we're gonna uh, result in is a little bit of a, a hot spot at the front. Kind of look, almost looks like a little mouth part. I don't know, it's just something that I like to do. Uh, I think it makes the fly look kind of neat. So that's how, that's how I'm gonna tie it in. All right, so uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of open spiral our way back down along the chenille. And all we're doing here is just trying to get the chenille held in place, trying to prevent it from, from having the tendency to want to spin on us because we're going to be laying our foam on top of it. So we've got that secure in, in the back and then I'm going to go ahead and open spiral my way back forward. So, you know, now that that's chenille's not going to pull out, it's held in nice and tight and we are ready to start wrapping around this hook. And I'm gonna do this with a bit of tension because if you put this on too loose, the chenille will have natural give in it. And when our foam rests on top of it, that foam will want to, to spin on us. Again, it's not the end of the world if it spins a little bit, but um, the more we can keep it secure, the, the, the better the fly is gonna fish. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping around our hook. Wrapping forward, you know, I didn't mention what chenille I'm using, uh, so I apologize. This is a uh, this is a sparkle. Uh, this is like um, I think it's called like black and gold chenille. Has natural barring in it. I like it because it has the sparkle to it. Use whatever chenille you have, you know, for for these. You know, obviously, you know, all of us have, you know, and if you don't have chenille, it, it's not required. Um, you can do this with a dubbing base. Now, basically what we're looking for is just something to kind of add to the underside of this fly so that there's just something more going on than just black foam. But if all you have is the foam, then just use the foam. You know, don't, don't worry and don't stress about um, this portion. But I, I do think that the chenille adds a, a, a bit to it. Um, you could use uh, peacock curl in addition if you wanted to, and, uh, and that would look really cool too. That would give a nice green iridescence. Um, so, you know, depending on where you are, because I know we have people watching from more than just our Charlottesville region, you know, you may have uh, the Japanese beetles uh, that are, are everywhere, and they kind of have a good green iridescence. So you could totally tie uh, with, uh, with some peacock curl and, and make a nice beetle imitation. All right, so we've wrapped Ford. And I'm, I'm kind of at my, my tie-in point. I'm not at the hook eye itself. Uh, I'm just back slightly because, again, I'm, I'm not trying to crowd my hook eye and I, I want a little orange highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and trap my chenille. And again, how I do that, right? I go behind, come forward, go behind, come forward, do that at least twice. 
and and that material will be locked into place. So I'll trim that and start just making sure that, that that's trapped into place. And we are ready almost to start putting in our foam, except we have to bring our thread back. So I'm just gonna do real large open spirals. And I'm not worried about having thread wrap over top of this chenille, because all that's doing is kind of adding uh, an interesting look and different colors. One of the reasons why I use this high visibility orange uh, to tie this. Um, so, you know, feel free to, to play around with that if you want. But, uh, but yeah, all right, let's try to make this a little bit bigger, I think. Give me one second here. No, oh, we'll do that. Center it up a little bit more. All right. So now we're ready for our foam. And so we have, um, for the foam, I have a, a nice long strip of, of black foam and I'm gonna show you how I got to this point. Um, you can see here it's cut to where it's about the same as the hook gap. So it's an easy way to do that. We take this, this is just a uh, sheet of craft foam, two millimeter thick. They cost about a dollar at any craft store. Uh, super, super nice to, to have. Um, go ahead and I put it over top, line it up and I just press it against that hook. When you do that, hopefully this will show up, yeah. You see this little notch, little impression? That tells me that is the width that I need for this hook for my fly. And, uh, and then it's just a matter of, of simply just, just cutting that width out. And I just periodically will just measure. Um, you know, so I'll kind of take a, a foam sheet and kind of just go down along the way just a couple of points and this helps me to have you know kind of a a guide as I go down it so you'll see here now that there's a couple impressions as we come down the foam sheet the uh, best way to do this is with one of those store-bought exacto cutters you know one of the little things and you get these these beautiful nice clean sheets so you know whenever our, our fly tying comes back where you know we'll be sitting down together um and you come in and you'll notice you have a whole bunch of strips of foam it's because i've brought in my exacto cutter and i've cut up a bunch all to the exact same uh size but you know if you don't have one of those or you're just tying one fly just you know press it up against that hook get that that hook gap perfect and then you know you just cut yourself a nice long sheet and i can tie many flies from just this one strip uh, as i i go through so, all right, um, I also notice where my, my thread is and where it is not. So it, it's actually not all the way in the back uh, where we tied in our, our chenille originally. It's actually just a little bit forward of our hook point. And that's because we are not going to be tying our foam um, in all the way at the back. We're gonna tie it only in, in about two points on this fly in order to, uh, to make the body uh, shape the way we want because we're actually going to use the thread to put a little bit of impression to give the illusion of segmentation uh, all about trying to make that profile right because you know when the when this is you know floating down this is what this is what the fish sees and so we want to make sure that you know it looks as realistic as possible all right um so we're going to take our foam and we are going to figure out about the length that we need. Because again, we, we have two millimeter foam. Now ideally, if you can get your hands on six millimeter foam, this can be a lot easier. Because you'll, you'll just have to measure once and then you just, you cut it. But we can turn three or two millimeter into six millimeter by folding it over three times. And so to do that, we find the right length. That looks pretty good. And then we fold back. 
Now I am purposefully folding more material in the front than what I actually need because I'm gonna trim that together so it makes it look like one cohesive piece of foam. So now I've folded back and now I'm gonna fold forward. And that's gonna give me three pieces of foam overlapping one another. And I've got plenty of room sticking out the back of this fly as well. And so I know, okay, that's about the length that I need. And I'm gonna go ahead and just snip off the excess so it becomes a lot easier to actually deal with this. And so I end up with kind of a, a little foam block. It's, it's a little apart right now, but I'm gonna show you ways that we're gonna help keep this together. Um, so once you have this, then you're gonna take your super glue. So I'm, by the way, still holding this in my left hand. And we're gonna run a bead of super glue. And again, I'm using this gel type super glue which is great because it does not set right away. Um, this is the Loctite Ultra Control or Ultra Gel Control. Um, gives me lots of time to, to work with. It doesn't set immediately upon contact. Um, even, you know, I can actually set this on and take it off if I need to and it hasn't set right away. Um, so I'm gonna have it where I have about that much hanging off the back, you know, so it's coming back beyond. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and really firmly hold this down in place, probably for about maybe 20 seconds. Uh, and this is just, you know, the, this firm pressure that it builds heat, it builds friction. Uh, that helps to set the super glue uh, and, and start letting that stick a little better. And after about you know 20 seconds, you'll find, of course, this, this front part will want to come off. It'll be kind of tacked into place. So the next thing that we're going to do is very carefully put a very thin bead of super glue on this section here. Now I see where my fold points are, so I'm going to fold back, press that into place. Again, the, this friction and heat that we're, we're building, that gets it to, to set. Um, and then I'm going to put one more very thin bead, because if you do a thick bead, it's going to spill all out along the sides. And all we want is just this foam to kind of stay together. By the way, if you want this stuff to set instantly, rather than pressing on it, put a thin amount of like saliva on the upside, and the moment that this touches, it'll instantly set. Because this stuff will set by, see it's, it's already set. Um, it actually, that's, that's one of the catalysts, is, uh, is some moisture. So, all right. So now I've got six millimeter of foam from uh, a strip of two millimeter. Just doubled over itself twice. Uh, or yeah, three layers of it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my thread. Now that I'm, I'm pretty sh sure that's set and I'm gonna do about two wraps, not super tight. So you can see here, there's a slight divot, but it's not, not super super tight on the on the fly and that's um that's good because if you crank down too much you're gonna start cutting into your foam and it's gonna start making the body look really strange because you know uh cicadas have big blocky bodies and so that's that's the the effect and the look that we're we're going for and so all right let's we're experimenting with camera angles tonight guys See if we can't. Playing around. All right, that's a little bit better there. It's on my shirt more. You guys can see it. All right. So, um, hopefully, you guys that are tying along have been able to kind of keep up on 
you know, trying to take some some breaks this time uh, based on some feedback that you guys have given me in the past. You said, hey, slow down. So, you know, we're going to try to go a little bit slower tonight so you guys can join along. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to shape the back end of this body a little bit. So the first way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in because you notice, right, they're not all the same length and that's fine. I'm just going to come in and just do one quick trim. So now it looks like one solid, solid piece. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you this before I cut. I want a little triangle just because I want a little taper on the back. So I'm going to come in and cut at about like that. And what that results in, see this guy? See how has that little little taper on, on the back end? Um, I don't know. I just think it makes it look good. So I'm going to try to do this as best I can at an angle because usually I'm looking down over top of the fly, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. And so I'm going to cut. There's one side, and then I'm going to do it on the other side. And this is going to be a little bit sharper than what I like. That's the... Uh, Normally, I don't quite like it to come to that much of a point. I'm going to actually blunt that out just a bit. Um, kind of hard to do on camera. So there we go. That, that's a little better. Um, this side's a little bit, a little on kind of weird and scraggly. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. So now that I have that back end shaped, I want to shape the front end of this fly. And this is, this is pretty simple. So remember, I, I, I've left a little bit of an orange spot, so I'm going to come in and just cut straight across. Not at an angle, straight across. <laughs> and uh, what that results in is, wow, that, that is not straight. Hang on. That's better. <laughs> Still not perfect, um, but that results in where it's sitting back from the eye a little bit, plenty easy to be able to tie on, and um, and it also makes it so that we have this little bit of a of a hot spot. And I like the way that that looks; almost makes it look a, a little mouth or something like that. So cool. All right, so uh, we've got uh, about two wraps in on this foam, and uh, now what we're going to do is before we move forward to tie in the next segmentation, uh, let's go ahead and take advantage of our thread bean here and tie in the rear rubber legs. And so I've got just a, a, a sheet of, um, this is a really cool coloration that I found, of like black with some red in it. Uh, use whatever color you want. You know, if you've got ones with the segmentation, cool. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. This catches the fishermen more than the fish. What is important is to make sure that you have something that sits on on the top of the water that will leave a little bit of an impression. Um, you know, whatever color it is, I don't think matters as much. But, um, you know, that I guess that's me. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down from about the front of the fly. And I'm going to, so you see right here. I have these rubber legs laying along the side of the body. Have it going up to where it's at about the front part of the body. This is the reason why I trim the body now. Now I'm going to hold that in place. And, uh, and you know, I, I pulled, sorry, I forgot to mention this. I pulled a single strand off this sheet. You don't have to do this. Um, I just think it's easier to work with a single strand. And I can use this for many, many, many flies. Um, so... Now I have this rubber leg and I'm going to go ahead and change positions because right now I'm holding it with my right hand in the front. Put my left hand right behind and just put one wrap and come back over top and it's loose, not super tight. Get my leg in position and this is fun. So I am maintaining the single piece going to lay it back over top of the body. So the back end of this is still connected and it's still a loop. And this is a really neat trick to keep your legs the exact same length. So now still holding it on the back, I'm going to tie in the other side of my legs, right? So one wrap around, one more over top. And that just holds the legs in place. 
So now I can uh, go ahead and trim. So I'm gonna hold this one forward and I'll, I'll, I'll rotate my vise so you can see what I'm doing. Same thing as the other one, I just want it to be without stretching it, so I'm not pulling. This is just where it's just enough to be tight and trim it to where it's just up to the front of the body. So by doing that, the, uh, the front legs are the same length and the rear legs will be the same length because I will, I will cut this together. Um, so but before that I do that, I wanna make sure that I get my legs in position. So now's the time to come and kind of move these wherever you want so that they're uh, in the right angle. And then to go ahead and put about another two good wraps. This, these have a little bit more tension on them. Um, so now I know, yeah, okay, this, these legs are, are pretty well locked in. And at the very end of this, I'm also going to put in some uh, head cement to kind of further lock these into place. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the, these legs. Let me capture it with my scissors so you guys can see it better on camera. Um, I'm just pulling it to the natural middle point, cutting it, and my rear legs are going to be the same length. Now these are a little longer than probably what they should be. Um, so if you if you do that, just grab them, hold them together, and uh, go ahead and, and, and give them a trim. I, I probably should have not had these quite as long. Um, and I just don't, I don't have a good measurement. And I apologize to you guys, I don't have a good measurement for that. It's more of a feeling of um, what looks natural, um, what looks proportional. You know, I, I guess maybe a, half a hook shank length behind or something, if I had to guess, or, or maybe you say that, you know, these back legs are twice as long as this back butt segment. Maybe that's a better measurement because it's, it's about that length. Um, but you'll kind of get the idea. Just, you know, if you've seen a bug, you, you kind of know, okay, yeah, that, that looks about right. Um, and so now the rear legs are set. And notice that they're, they're sitting out, you know, from the body. Um, they're not tucked underneath. They're, they're sitting in, in a great position. And that's, that's a, a pretty simple and easy way to, to tie in, you know, uh, rubber legs. Um, some people struggle with it, but I, I think it's, you know, something that, you know, if you take your time with it, uh, it'll work really well. All right, so we're going to transition forward because we want to tie. Uh, the next place that we want to tie is, is farther up along this body. So that's pretty simple to do. All I'm going to do is, and I'm, I'm going to show you uh, from the camera angle on the underside, is come at a large diagonal and that allows me now to be farther up. So you see what I did there? I just pulled my thread forward, captured it on the foam where I wanted to and, uh, and pull it down into place. Being careful not to capture uh, those, those rubber legs that I put in. So now I'm in, a, um, in the forward tying position. And I did that in one single stroke. Uh, and that minimizes the amount of thread that's going underneath here. And again, I know I'm putting orange uh, threads throughout underneath here, but that's okay because the underside of a, a cicada looks really kind of crazy. Um, and so I think uh, this actually works and almost makes it a little bit more natural. But uh, but again, you know, if you're if you're worried about that, you can always tie off and then you know, cut it and then just go up forward and, and tie. But I, I don't think there's any reason to do that. And if you're worried about this little piece of thread being a weak point of the fly, we're gonna strengthen this fly at the end with some head cement and really make the underside of this fly a little bit uh, more firm and, and a little bit better uh, as far as durability. All right, so I'm at the forward tie-in point. We're gonna do the same thing that we did in the back. So we're gonna come forward, put a little bit of pressure in. I'm gonna show you how much pressure I'm putting. So you can see here, putting a little bit, so it just starts to dig into the foam. Do another uh, wrap around. Again, just a little bit, so we're digging into the foam just slightly. And uh, now I'm ready to go ahead and, and potentially put in um, my rubber legs. But this is, this is up to you guys. I like to put my legs in last. So we have a couple things that we wanna do. We wanna put in wing, and we wanna put in an indicator. So I wanna put those in first, and then I'll put in my rubber legs. If you wanna put your rubber legs in now, feel free. By the way, if I was you know, not worried about um, 
What can you do to prevent? Okay, uh, so Stu asked, what can I do to prevent the um, foam uh, from being cut with the thread? So there's a couple things. One, I apologize. I didn't mention what type of thread I am using. So I am using UTC 210 or, or Denier Flat Wax 210. Um, or you might see it if, uh, so some thread rating systems are like 3-06-8-0. Um, this would be the equivalent of G in that. So I'm using a thicker thread. That makes this thread, one, stronger for me to be able to put tension when I need, but two, um, decreases the chance of cutting the foam. The other thing is I'm being really careful with the amount of pressure that I put. So again, if I really crank down on this fly, you'll see it really start that that see how that thread's disappearing. See how the um, the edges, especially down here, that's really starting to go in. That's because I'm putting a ton of pressure on. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm only trying to make sure that this foam is being held in place lightly. Remember, we put that coat of super glue down here along the bottom of the fly. So this foam is attached to this hook. It is attached to the chenille. So I, even if I don't put thread on it, that foam has some strength already. This is just adding additional strength. So you don't feel like you really have to crank in. If you do cut your foam, don't worry about it. Just back off with your tension. Hopefully you didn't cut all the way down. If you did cut all the way down, um, you know, maybe the time to take the razor blade, cut it off and, and, and start over. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just be careful, Stu, you know, as you go through this. Uh, this is all about thread tension and thread control, but, uh, but not, you know, once you get the feel of it, you know, you, you shouldn't have any, any issues. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to put this at just a slight angle so you guys can see it. And, um, I'm going to tie in my wing material. So for me, for my wing material, I really like using like a nice orange. Uh, I got a, kind of an orange and black theme going on. If you haven't noticed, um, crystal or crinkle flash. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You don't have to put a wing in either. You could do this with, um, and I, I'm going to show this on the next fly. You can actually do this with deer hair. Uh, it makes a really cool effect. You can do this with um, any type of regular flash that you have. You can do this with, you know, like post material that you would use for a dry fly. Yeah, the sky's the limit. But uh, for me, I like the crystal flash. And so I'm just grabbing just, uh, I don't know how many strands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's about nine or 10 strands. Um, and I'm gonna grab full length going back right up to my zip tie that, that's kind of holding this in place. And um, so you can see, I like to wrap it around my finger. That allows me when I come in to cut with my scissors to be able to, to very easily and, and comfortably cut right up against that zip tie because again material management let me uh, let me get my my hands out of the way i like to cut as close to the zip tie as i can and um you know if this is going to be too long then i'll fold it to get it to uh the, the right length but uh, the reason why i do this is that way every time that i grab a strand off of this this hunk of flash i know it's the same length and that way I don't end up getting, you know, uh, varying lengths of, of flash uh, when I go to, to tie. And that's something that, that always drives me crazy. All right. So for this fly in particular, I'm not worried about folding it up and, and doubling and, and tripling it over. Um, I'm going to simply just tie it in, uh, in, in two lengths. And I think that this will be uh, wide enough. So I'm going to find about the midway point. And um, just put my thread over top, kind of let that, that hang down. So that's about my midway point. And I'm going to put it at an angle. See how this is coming off the top of this fly at an angle? That is going to naturally give me a wing that, that splays out. And if you've ever seen this kind of a cicada or a locust, um, their wings are so big. And, uh, and I don't, I don't want to put that much material on. So by just having it splaying out, it gives the illusion of uh, bigger, wider wings. Um, so this is up to you. If you don't want to, to tie it in this way, you don't have to. But uh, so I'm coming at an angle. I'm going to put about two wraps, maybe three wraps, just to maintain that angle in that direction. Now I'm going to take 
my other bit of flash. And I'm gonna actually let it be a little bit loose. And hopefully this translates well on, on camera. So what I'm doing is, let me, let me do it first. So, and let me put another wrap because I'm gonna have to let go. So you see here how there's a little bit of flash coming forward. Hang on, let me see if I can't zoom in. I'm not sure if I can. Um, I don't think I can right now. Nope, sorry guys, I can't zoom in. Um, working on it, we're, we're getting more sophisticated every week with our, our cameras uh, as we do this, but, um, but eventually I'm gonna get it where I can actually zoom in and have it more clarity. But I have a small bit of flash trapped in front of this uh, thread. And the reason why is that allows me to pull this at my angle and get that, that set on the other side. So that allows me to have that kind of angle on, on both ways. If I just pulled this tight, then I wouldn't be able to capture that angle. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Uh, and, it, and if it doesn't, I apologize, but uh, you know, kind of play around with it. The idea here is to maintain those angles in both directions uh, for this flash. And so I'm gonna put about one more wrap in. This one I'll put in a little bit tighter. And now I know that those wings are, are kind of set in place, not very likely to move, and even less likely when we put on uh, the next piece, which is gonna be um, more cider material, more of an indicator. So I'm gonna grab all my wings together, kind of pull them so they come back, and then I'm gonna trim them together. And I like my wings a little bit long, because again, cicadas, uh, locusts, they have these big giant wings, so I'm really trying to help it to, to imitate that. And so I'm gonna cut, you know, kind of way back here, and, and I don't know what, that's at least the same length as my, my rear legs coming all the way back. You know, so kind of think about it that way if you want. You even come a little bit farther back if you want. Just kind of play around with it. Give it a cut. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, now I've kind of got my wings just kind of going out and being crazy, but, uh, but at the same time, really, I think looking nice and buggy. Now's another good time because we have not, excuse me one second, <coughs> I'm imitating Jeff here and I forgot to have a, a glass of water right next to me so that I can catch, uh, you know, when I get to dry, you guys should try this live stream sometime and, and have to talk a whole bunch. Um, <clears throat> all right, so embarrassment aside, now what um, we can do is we can adjust these if we want to, if, if they're not looking quite right because we really have not cinch these down in place. We're trying to only put as many thread wraps as we need to. Otherwise, we're gonna have you know too many thread wraps and it'll get real built up and real bulky. Um, so the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna put on a side of material. And I'm gonna maintain kind of my orange theme going on, uh, but this, the top of the fly, the fish really don't see. And so you wanna use a color that's really easy for your eyes to identify. So for me, I, I can pick orange off the water pretty easily. If you wanted to use uh, some chartreuse, uh, if that's really easy for you to see, that's great. Another great color to use is pink. Um, so this is a, a, a different fly that I have, um, but this nice big pink in indicator on the top. And that's super easy to pick out because very few things in nature are a bright, vibrant pink. So, so again, you know, pick an indicator based upon you know, your preference. Don't worry about the fish because they're not gonna see the top of the fly. Um, but for the, the indicator, this by the way, this, is, this was a great find. Um, one second. So I was in a craft store trying to get foam and I found this, this multi-pack of like popsicle stick shaped foam. And so, you know, it come in, in, in multiple colors and they're you know not super crazy long, but they're they're kind of perfect for tying foam bugs and everything with. Um, so I have I have the big sheet foam. I have a bunch of those popsicle stick foam, and then I have a third type of foam that we're going to see for the next fly, um, which uh, which we'll, we'll go through a little bit quicker. This one we're going real slow to show the techniques, and then I'll I'll show you how you modify this, and I'll I'll do that one a lot faster. Um, 
All right, so the popsicle sticks make perfect indicators because all I need to do is just cut a, a slim piece right off like that. And now I've got great kind of top cider material, indicator material, and I can kind of place that right over top. And um, start to secure this in place. And again, I'm trying not to trap my back legs when I do this. And this I'm going to cinch down. So you can see I've really bent that, that foam. And that's because I want this to stick up. I want this to be a little bit more vertical. It's easier for me to see when it's on the water. And again, the fish don't see this, so I'm not worried about it. I've cut it thinner than the body of my fly. So when we look from underneath, See how that indicator's gone? And that's the way that the um, fish will see it. So, so again, it'll be invisible to the fish, but visible to us. So I've got about two good wraps in there, and I'm gonna come in and just cut it so that it's not visible on the front end of the fly. You know, again, completely disappears, um, but also sticks up so that, you know, if I'm looking at it, you know, I, I'm seeing the, the wings stick up, I'm seeing this stick up, it should be pretty easy for me to see, even if I've cast it, you know, 40, 50, 60 feet away from me. So, all right, uh, next thing we need to do is we need to tie on our front legs. And to do this, we're kind of going to do the opposite that we did on the back. So, where did my rubber leg go? Here we go. So we're gonna take this rubber leg. Again, I just have, a, you guys can't see it, a single strand. Um, I'm gonna lay the already cut end towards the back. And I'm gonna kind of lay it back, not all the way to the back, but kind of to where that, um, see how it's kind of back to where I first cut that notch in. That's a, that's a good length. Hold it in place. Bring my thread forward. Well, one time, lay it back over. Now that time it, it rolled on me and went underneath. So this is a great time, great opportunity to kind of grab it and, and put it back into to place where I want it. Let me, um, let me change my angle so you guys can see this better. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna learn my lesson from last time. I'm not gonna put as much material in the front. I'm actually gonna make it a lot shorter, especially since the front legs I want shorter. Um, so I'm gonna kind of have it where it loosely just goes around that, that front hook eye. So see that, how uh, I've maintained that there. And now I'm gonna um, lay it back down along the other side. This leaves it exposed for me to come in with my thread put that one wrap over top, that second wrap in place, so now it's held in place. I can take my excess material, trim it off. Again, trimming back where that kind of notch point was so that my legs are the same length. And um, so you see, this leg and this leg are the same length. And uh, now I'll go ahead and I'll put about two more wraps in place that are a lot more secure. One, two, now notice I didn't put so much pressure that I caused these legs to completely go uh, and, and out from the body. They're coming back at an angle. So that's another thing, Stu. If, if you've noticed that your legs are like sticking straight up like this, so rather than coming off at these nice angles, if they're like caved back in, then that's another indication that you put too much tension onto the uh, onto the hook. Uh, but in this case I haven't. Uh, so now I'm just gonna let my, my thread hang. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna come back in, pull forward. And again, I just kind of made this so that this this loop naturally was right around that hook eye. Um, just as a, as a visual indicator for me. I'm gonna cut them out and separate them. And now I kind of have, you know, these, these rubber legs sticking off in um, from, our, from our little cicada. And that, that's gonna give us a good kind of cross section. And you could play around with this. And, and depending on the bug that you're trying to imitate, you may cut um, longer legs or shorter legs, you know, and, and, and really kind of tailor it to, to whatever it is that you're, you're trying to imitate. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we need to, again, I wanna advance my thread forward because I actually wanna finish up here by the hook guy. And that's just as simple as taking my thread, I'll show you from underneath again, coming forward at an angle and capturing just underneath. So I'm gonna show you that one more time, right? So I'm back here. 
coming forward at an angle, capturing it underneath. And so now I'll just go ahead and I'll just put a bunch of thread wraps because I want a little hot spot up at the front end of this fly. I think it looks really neat. This is just me. This is my preference, my style. Um, you don't want to do this, uh, you don't have to. But uh, I kind of like how it looks. So I, I've kind of put that into place and now I also can whip finish it. Um, you can put half hitches on here if you don't want to whip finish. Uh, just be careful, don't trap your legs when you do this. Three, four turns, and that should be getting secure. Pull that tight, and go ahead and trim off the thread. So there's two things left that I wanna do. Uh, one's for looks, the other is for durability. So for looks, I wanna put eyes on this fly. Um, eyes are pretty simple. We can, uh, so I have, uh, again, kind of that, that, that popsicle foam, but it's in, in a red. I'm just gonna cut off a thin strip just so I kind of have this here. And I'm gonna show you a trick when working with foam. So I wanna make these little eyes coming off the side, kind of neat. Um, but uh, if I would cut these real short and I put super glue and I stick it down there, I guarantee one of two things is gonna happen. Uh, one of three things I should say. I'm either going to um, super glue my finger to the bug, highly likely. I'm gonna super glue the foam to my finger and not to the bug, or uh, I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna super glue both that red eye to my finger as well as uh, my finger to the, uh, to the bug. So I'm gonna avoid that. I'm gonna keep this nice and long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a drop of super glue right where I wanna put my eye. Just a small drop, doesn't need to be real large. Right, so you can barely see that on the on the camera, just this little drop. And I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna wet. Remember before how I said that a catalyst for this super glue is moisture? I'm gonna wet my finger and wet the end of this. And so now I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna stick, and it's gonna be hard to see um, on the camera, sorry guys. But I'm basically gonna stick this right on. And that now is a super crazy long eye, right? Uh, but because I've, I've wet it, it's instantly set. So remember, this is this ultra con control or ultra gel control. Yeah, um, and I'll show you on the other side how I can stick it on and pull it off. But because I, I uh, put a little bit of moisture on there, as soon as it goes in, it's sticking in place. Um, I'm still gonna give it just a, a little bit of time and, and I, I filled that time by, by yapping. But uh, now I can come in and I can trim this. And I wanna do this real carefully. This is hard to see, but I want you guys to see it. I'm just gonna trim so that there's a little bit sticking off, but not so much that it's obnoxious. See, now it has a little eye. And I didn't super glue my fingers to anything. So we're gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. Um, yeah, I see. I see Jeff had a lot of vote of confidence for me, uh, voting number three. Yeah, and that is exactly what would have happened if I uh, had done this without having this kind of nice long piece of foam. So again, putting a little drop of super glue in place. Now I promised you I'd show you what it's like when you don't have uh, moisture. So if I stick this right in here, notice how I can pull this off a whole bunch of times, right? And if I try to like pull it over and grab it, pulls right away. And so that's why we want to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that end off before I super glue it to myself and have Jeff laugh at me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and come back in, put another very small drop of super glue, wet the end of it, stick it down right in place, hold it firm for just one second, and now it's stuck in place. So still give it a little bit of time. You really want to make sure, you know, maybe a little bit of pressure if you want to. You really do want to make sure that it's set in there. And again, this is, I'm not sure that the, the fish noticed the eyes. I don't know. Um, but I, I sure do like fishing a fly with a little bit of an eye on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in and trim it off. And now my fly has, uh, has two little red eyes sticking out from it, uh, which is great. And um, we, we have a, uh, 
we have a cicada. And you can fish this. I could take this out and fish this now, but I want to make it a little bit more durable. Um, so if you have some head, head cement, uh, UV glue would work here as well. Uh, you know, Sally Hansen's hard as nails, really whatever your, your preference is. I just have some, some high gloss head cement. So I'm going to take a little drop, stick it in on place. And I will actually run this all the way down the bottom of this fly. I'm not putting a ton on, just a light coat, just enough that it's going to um, soak in a little bit, really help firm things up uh, and really help, you know, there's little uh, single strands of thread. Um, and I'm also focusing on my two thread tie-in points, really making sure I've got uh, a solid amount of, of head cement there. So again, you can notice, right? There's not like a giant pile of head cement coming off the bottom of this fly, just enough to have everything secure. I'll come then on the sides, just touch a little bit along the sides, helps lock the legs in place, helps protect that thread so that this can catch many, many fish, hopefully. Um, and I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Uh, just makes it more durable. You know, just my preference. Um, totally not required to do this. Uh, this again is just, you know, because I want to make sure that it's a, a bug that I can fish uh, all day, hopefully. Uh, although with my luck, I'll cast it into a tree on the first cast and lose it. But uh, that's why we tie multiple, multiple bugs. And that's it. So that's the cicada, you know, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. It does not take nearly as much time as what we, we've taken um, to kind of demonstrate this, but I want you guys to really see the techniques that I'm using. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you how using this methodology that we did to tie the cicada, uh, and I'll try to do this pretty quickly, um, I will show you how to tie a grasshopper. Uh, and then, of course, you can change up your colorations as much as you want. If, if you're not a fan of really flashy, bright, you know, colored hoppers, you can tie this in brown, you know, or, or you know, any other bug that you're looking to imitate. You know, you can use this. So let me pop this off and, and get a another hook on. Um, again, I always debarb my hooks before I tie. And I don't use the vise to debarb the hook because it'll damage the jaws of the vise over time. All right, got it in place. Um, another thing for any of you who are tying with a um, with a vise that is set up with uh, kind of like a rubber band as my tension, right? So this is a, a Renzetti vise, and the way that this cam lever lock works is that um, I have tension supplied by this this rubber band. You notice here I don't have this cranked to where this lever is all the way back up here. Um, that's because you will damage. Your vice, you're overstressing this rubber band when you do it, and you will you will damage that over time and break that. So instead, I am uh, making sure that when I put my my hook in, I turn. There's a, a wheel on a Renzetti right here until it is snug. This is uh, forward, and then I will I will pull this until there's enough tension such that I can go and make it sing. And, and literally, you'll hear that sound, and I know that I have enough tension on it. Also, you know, obviously I'm bending the hook shank down, so I don't need any more tension than that. Um, so other people have different types of vices, but uh, but if you have one with this type of rubber band, that's how I really recommend that you set it in order to get that, that hook in place. Um, all right, so I promised you a grasshopper that was really easy to, to tie and using the same pattern. And I also promised you a third type of foam. So let's get into it. So this is a sheet of green foam, chartreuse. Um, and this is uh, kind of like a peach foam. I kind of like the color of it, um, but it's, you know, a more muted color. And this foam has a white side. Well, it's not actually white. What this is, is sticky. So I found this in a craft store as well. This is a foam with an adhesive on one side. And that adhesive peels off. And this is uh, quite sticky, especially to itself. And so if you were to take this, and I, I have this strip here just as a demonstration, and fold it back on itself, you're basically gonna have to rip your foam apart in order to be able to, uh, to, to break that. So this is a way that you can layer foam 
pretty easily on top of one another. And so what I have done, and I, I already cut this to length, um, but we went over that with the cicada, is I took a piece of chartreuse and uh, pulled the back in, uh, sticky away, and stuck it on top of a, um, that, that kind of like peach colored foam. And then I uh, took another piece of chartreuse and peeled the sticky off of it. And I actually put sticky on sticky so that, you know, there's no stickiness here, there's no stickiness here. And I get this six millimeter piece of foam with uh, some kind of neat coloration in it. You can play around with this as much as you want. In fact, I've got a whole stack of, uh, cause this came, it was a couple dollars, um, but it came with like a hundred sheets, all with different colors. And so I, I've, I've tied up, you know, kind of in advance, right? I get my strip of foam and uh, I stick it together and then I can tie along the way. But again, I wanted to make sure that I already had this pre uh, configured so that we can tie this a little bit faster. Um, but, uh, but again, same length, right? That we're gonna do with the cicada. So let me put my finger on the top so you can see. Sticking off the back a little bit, um, having it where it's not crowding that hook eye, so it's easy for us to tie on the hook. Um, for my uh, for my grasshopper, I'm gonna not use the as bright of a, a thread. I'm gonna use a little bit more muted. This is a, um, I think it's called wood duck, but again, um, this is a, this is a 140. So so Stu, I have to be more careful with this since this is a thinner thread. Um, but it's uh, the thickest thread that I have in this color. Uh, so, you know, you'll watch as I do this, I'll, I'll really be paying attention to my thread tension so I don't cut the foam. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as the cicada. I'm gonna tie this a little bit faster, guys, so you may not be able to keep up with me, um, but, uh, but this video will be available uh, after it, it, it processes. It usually takes a couple minutes before you guys can view it. But um, these are the exact same steps that we did with the cicada. I'll slow down when, I, when things are, are, are a little bit different from it. Okay, so I've tied back, open spiral forward, not coming all the way up to the hook eye. Um, for this fly, I'm not gonna use the, the real shiny uh, chenille. I have a, um, somewhere, I have a different colored of chenille. One second. This is a, a brown uh, woolly bugger chenille. So it still has a little bit of flash in it because I like some flash and I'm targeting smallmouth and I know they appreciate flash. Uh, so again, I have my notch. So I'm gonna pull out as long as I need. Take the end, pinch, exposing a little bit of that inner yarn. Lay that down, trap it in place, wrap board, kind of open spiral my way back making sure that I'm putting thread tension. So here's a good uh, demonstration of, of why, you know, I always say put your, pull upwards with your thread tension, don't pull downwards. Watch the chenille. So I'm gonna pull downwards. See how it pulled that chenille right down on the bottom of that hook? This time I'm gonna pull upwards. See how it stays in place? So that's why you, um, that's why the direction that you put your, your tension matters because you'll spin your material otherwise. Okay, so I now have in the back position, I'm gonna go ahead open spiral my way forward. So now it's feeling pretty, pretty firm. Go ahead and wrap board. In front, behind, in front, behind, in front. That's now locked in place. Pull in with my finger to pull the thread away. So I can come in, trim off the excess. And I like to put a, another couple of wraps after I do that to really help lock that chenille in place. So we're gonna do an open spiral back. And all this is doing too is really helping to, to lock the chenille in place. I'm in front of the hook point by a little bit. That's my, my, uh, my tie in point for my uh, hopper body. Having the foam come about to the same front tie-in point where I have my chenille on the front and have it where um, I have enough hanging off the back. Go ahead and almost 
See, I'm doing this so fast, I almost forgot. Little bead of super glue. I like to make sure I got the length right before I put that super glue on. I'm going to use my, my trick just to help speed this along, make this a little bit faster. Wet the underside, but now I know it's going to set immediately, so I really want to make sure it's in the right place. Put down some tension. I, I actually will grab the hook eye to push this hook shank up to help put me uh, to, to the right tension I need. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to turn my vise so you can see this. So you can see I'm not putting a ton of pressure on, putting about two loose wraps and a little bit, just enough where it, it makes it um, a little indented, but not so much that I'm cutting into that foam, especially since this is thinner thread. So I really need to be careful there. All right, so now that I got about two in, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the back end of this. So I'm gonna come in here, little notch on one side, same on the other. Just gonna clean that up slightly. All right, so that's the, the back end of this fly. So now that I have that in place, let's go ahead and do my, my legs. So for the hopper, I'm actually not using a rubber sheet. This is a, um, found this on clearance at, uh, at a tackle shop. And it's, it's for bass jigs. It's for um, putting on like a spinnerbait. Um, so it actually has this little like rubber thing here and it's all meant to just slip over top of a hook. Um, I guess, you know, for tube flies or whatever you're tying. Anyway, it makes really good uh, tail material or uh, leg material for flies. So I'm going to pull a single strand off and cut it. So always, always keep your eye out. You don't necessarily have to go to a fly shop to get, uh, get materials. Um, you know, you can, you can find some really interesting things uh, in, in even normal fish, uh, like fishing tackle shops. All right, so I'll have the, the front leg coming forward to the, the first part of that foam. Put about two wraps over. Again, I'm not putting so much tension. Watch this. I'm going to put a ton of tension in. Watch what happens. See how that leg starts really moving back and at an extreme angle? That's how I know, oh, I've put too much tension in. Now, this might be really hard for me to recover from. So I'm actually going to unwrap and try to help flatten this back out. Two wraps on. But I wanted you to see if your legs are really doing that, you're putting too much tension in. So see that that's coming out at a good angle. Um, that's how I like it. So now I'm going to show you how to get the legs to have this really kind of funky kink in them. And that's a simple overhand knot. So I'm actually going to take the leg. This is really hard to do, so don't worry about doing this. In fact, I tie it like the cicada legs. I'm not sure the fish notice. Um, but if you're ever curious how people get their legs to kind of turn like that, you just kind of put a, um, an overhand knot. And yeah, this isn't easy to do. It's probably easier to do this before the fly gets put on, or the, uh, the legs get put on the fly. So I'm going to start, start pulling that knot tighter. Kind of making sure that I'm, I'm slipping it into the position I want it in. Pull it tight. And now trim my leg. And uh, that gives me a real long leg that also has a little bit of a natural bend and kink into it. I am not sure that you need to, to, to do that at all. Um, but, uh, but it, it, you know, it's a different technique. And, and hopefully that will sit on the water a little bit up. But, hey, you know. Sometimes we, we tie a little bit fancier so that it looks cool for us and maybe it'll make you fish it with a little bit more confidence. And if you're fishing something with more confidence, guess what? It'll catch more fish. All right, so we're going to show you how to do it again um, for, the, uh, for the other side. So put this on in place. One, two wraps in. And go ahead and tie in our overhand knot. Being careful along the way to kind of manipulate that knot. I'm trying to aim for where that knot's going to finish up at about the butt end. 
of my uh, of my fly, pull that tight, and go ahead and try to try to make it the same length. So I'm gonna pull these two legs together, kind of mark that spot. Okay, I need to cut right there. That should be roughly the same length. And so now I have two little long hopper legs off the back. All right, fancying our thread forward. Remember, we kind of come forward at an angle, come down. We put about two wraps in place. One, two, okay. We're ready to put in our, our um, wing material. Uh, so for this wing material, uh, again, Feel free to do the same thing. Use um, you know whatever you want, right? You can totally use this kind of crinkle flash material. If you wanted to use uh, what they call poly, poly yarn or xylon or something like that or antron, yeah, it's completely fine. You can also do a little bit of deer hair if uh, if you want to if you want to, and I'll just show you how to do that. So I'm not taking a ton off, kind of like as much as you would do for an elk hair caddis, maybe, right? Um, just a, a, a small amount and um, cut it off your material. And again, I'm always cutting as close to the hide as I can manage. That's a really weird angle for me to show you guys. Okay, and up, sure. Hope you can see that. Cut right against the hide. Uh, same thing as always, we're gonna take our deer hair and we're trying to get the little shorts and fluffy bits out of it. If you have a comb, this is a great time to use your comb. Um, otherwise you can just pull the material like that. You can put it on the fly just like this, uh, or you can stack it. I like to stack it just so it looks a little bit neater. And that's tips first, because I, I want to line it off the tips, not the butt ends. Just hitting my stacker against the table. Once I've done it enough times, I bring the stacker sideways. And you guys, we've shown this in previous videos. Um, pull that away. Grab these ends here, and you can see that I've got the the tips are now mostly aligned. Here, I'll hold that right there. And I'm gonna put those um, to kind of where they come back to, to again, kind of where that, that notch is. Uh, get that kind of in place. I like to put just a loose wrap in, and that way I can come in with my thumb. So let me show you what I'm doing. It's kind of, oh, oh, oh no. That is why you put that extra wrap on when you're tying live, uh, so that when you turn it so you guys can see it, you don't uh, <laughs> have it all fall off. Give me one second, all right? I'm just gonna uh, literally go through those same steps again. So hey, you get to see it twice. Um, go ahead and Cut this off, right against the hide. Clean out the shorts and the fluffy bits. Put it into the stacker, tips first. Pull it out sideways, yay, nice and stacked. Back on top of the fly. Aiming for the tip ends to be uh, about where that notch is. Putting in one wrap, and crucially for the camera, a second wrap, so then I can turn it sideways and not have it all flare out. I'm actually taking my finger and I'm pressing in. And this is helping to spread out this deer hair. See that? See that difference that makes? So, you know, by pressing that in and spreading it out, I'm gonna put another wrap in just to help secure that. Now they're uh, they're more spread out and they're they're sitting up real high, um, and that's fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and just take my scissors and give this the butt ends a haircut. So I'm coming in, trimming, and uh, you know just so just so that I don't have as much craziness going on. Of course, I just blew deer hair all over my computer that you guys don't see where this is being filmed from, so that's fun. All right. 
So I still want to do an indicator. I still like orange for me. It's real easy to see. Um, believe it or not, this is orange. And uh, same thing that we did with the cicada, right? We just cut a strip that is thinner than the body of our fly. And put this in place. Gives me a nice contrasting color. Get it down in place. Pull on the upstroke. Make sure it's not coming off on me. Give it a nice and good amount of tension so it flares up. Come in and trim this as well. So good striking contrast to color. Hopefully that should be pretty easy for me to see, you know, if it's farther out in the water. All right, uh, so now I wanna do my legs. I wanna do the front legs. I'm not worried, by the way, with the front legs about trying to put in the uh, little knot and, and make the legs kind of have that, that kink in the back. I think it looks neat. I don't think it's more, um, something that's necessary. I just wanted you guys to see how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, for the grasshopper, bring them back. I'm gonna make the front legs on the grasshopper a little bit shorter than I did with the cicada. So I'm gonna kind of have it only going to maybe about halfway between this back segmentation and uh, where that notch is. So just as long as I've got a good reference for that second leg on the other side, that's all that matters. So just enough, just two wraps to make sure that that's in place, but not worrying about tension right now. I just want the leg to where it's not gonna fall off. Same thing that I did with the cicada, where I'm just putting enough tension so that it's wrapping kind of around that front eye of that hook. Um, so that's about the, the amount I want. I'm gonna put one wrap, two wraps in place. And now I'm gonna cut this, this leg, again, same place, going about halfway between where my tie-in point was and that back notch. So that's kind of in place. If I, If you want, by the way, so you see how I have these, where this is longer than that back one, I can actually come in and cut that so that they're uh, closer to the same length. And I'm, I'm gonna do that on the other side too. So I think that looks pretty good. Actually, these are, these are on point. These are, are the right length. Um, so now I'm gonna come into my front, grab it with the scissors and give it another trim. And there, now I have my, my legs. If you, um, by the way, if you don't want these middle legs, like let's say you say, you know, that's too much craziness going on in the middle of the fly, um, feel free, you can cut them off if you want. You know, and actually, this kind of looks like that. I didn't quite cut them off, but I only did it where there was, um, uh, let, me, let me get this angle right, like a back leg and a front leg, so there's not as much crazy legs. This has six legs, as it kind of should, but, uh, but yeah, you can kind of modify that and change that if you want. You know, this is just a really easy and effective way of tying in legs. All right, so now that everything is in place, I'm gonna do two good wraps with a little bit more pressure uh, just to help trap everything in. Bring that thread forward to just a couple, couple wraps up in the front. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna whip finish. Do a five turn. And this, this fly, again, is done, ready to be fished. We're gonna make it a little bit more durable and we're gonna catch the fishermen a little bit. Um, so I found, again, I, I had a lot of fun in the craft store. Now, I didn't go during this quarantine. I, I went to the craft store long before, um, but I found these little googly doll eyes and I thought that they looked really neat. And um, they come in a pack of um, way too many. So you can take these little googly eyes and you can glue them into place. So let me get out just to, just two of them. So these googly eyes have like, they're like round on one side. Oh, that's totally not coming in. And, and they're, uh, they're kind of flat on the other. So I'm going to put a uh, drop of super glue on this, this kind of flat backside. Hey, not eight legs. Six legs are just kind of crossing, so it makes it look like there's more. 
Well, all right. There might be eight legs on there. Jeff counted. Anyway, works for a spider too. <laughs> I don't think the fish count. All right, so I put a little bit of super glue on. You just see that on camera, how it's no longer flat. I'm gonna wet part of foam where I wanna put it and I wanna be very careful to kind of line this up and stick it in place. Give it a little bit of pressure. And not super glue it to my finger like I just did. I don't know how I did that, I'll be honest with you guys. But it's in place. And I'm gonna do this to the, the other side as well. <laughs> so, so Jeff's saying I need to cut off two legs since it is technically all right we're gonna make Jeff happy guys we're gonna cut off two legs there now it's technically an insect uh, <laughs> but it's just as simple as that um, if you if you need to do any type of uh, adjustments I don't think it matters I don't think the fish care either all right, so we put a little bit of super glue on the end of this eye. We wet our foam, we get it in place, and we drop it right on in. Put a little bit of pressure, and then I like to put pressure from both sides. Really squeeze it in, and now we have little googly eyes. That's kind of fun. So, and, uh, and there we go. So um, the last thing that we want to do is the same thing that we did before. And by the way, you notice this took a lot less time um, and I, I still went through and did some explaining. So these, you can crank these flies out very, very quickly. All right, so this is just head cement. We're doing the same thing here where we're, we're gonna add to the durability of our fly, really um, protect this thread that's on the underneath. Uh, this also provides a little bit more texture for the fish when it bites into it. it it'll, you know, insects are hard. So, you know, if it's super, super soft, it may not feel right. And with a little bit more of a, um, a texture, hopefully that fish will hang on for just that half a second longer. This is what I tell myself, so that I uh, have a chance to set that hook. So, and do more along here. See, everyone's making fun of my inability to count the number of legs that I put on my fly. I guess that's fair, but hey, I've caught fish on these, so, you know, the fish just say, whoa, extra legs, that's a delicacy, right? That's like those turkeys. I don't know if you remember, like, the John Madden days, they'd wheel that turkey out at Thanksgiving, and it had, like, eight legs or something crazy, so, I don't know, it looks more appetizing to me. That's what, that's my story, and that's what I'm sticking to, guys, but, uh, all right, so, yeah, we, um, just put a little bit of head cement to protect those thread wraps, and uh, and this is it. So you can see here that now this fly, hopefully, looks like a grasshopper to you guys, right? But we tied it the same way that we tied our, our, our cicadas, um, which, yeah, okay, they, they may look similar, but they're also imitating two different bugs. And, you know, uh, pretty easy to to change these up based upon, you know, whatever kind of larger insect is hatching. And hopefully you guys learn some stuff. Hopefully you, you know, learn how you don't necessarily need to worry about, it. oh, if I don't have foam that's thick enough for this pattern, how you can make thicker foam. We've shown you two different ways that we can do this, right? We, we showed you how to do it by folding foam over top one another. By the way, if you don't have the sticky foam, I could have done uh, the same thing where I just took different colors, cut them to the same width and layered them on top of one another. Uh, and then, um, you know, if you get the sticky foam like I, I found, uh, then you can actually pre-prepare your sheets and, um, you know, stick them together, cut them to the size and, and really, you know, get some supplies with some neat colorations. So, <laughs> so, 
Yeah, we we have definitely devolved in in our conversation. And we're talking about dark meat versus light meat, as far as uh, it's what the fish prefer. Um, that's fun. I, I, we need to do a study on that. You know, clearly we've all been in quarantine for too long. So so that's it, guys. I, I really hope that you enjoyed it, and um, you know, feel free to tie some up and uh, send me some photos to see how they they come out. But uh, if you have any questions, you know that, that we weren't able to get to uh, from the the chat. Or, or you didn't think to afterwards, leave a comment. You know, you know we, we keep an eye on the videos and, and we'll comment on it uh, and, and let you guys know um, and, and hopefully be able to answer those questions. Thanks again for all your time. I hope you guys are continuing to stay safe and stay sane. And, um, you know, you're able to, uh, to kind of safely get out, um, you know, maybe get on the water if you can. Again, you know, just being, being safe and mindful of others. So you guys take it easy, and we will see you on Tuesday of next week. Uh, we are going to try to line up a guest tire for you guys um, since Jeff is unable to, to tie next week. We do not know the pattern yet. We do not know the person yet. Uh, I will fill you in on that as soon as I know. And uh, until then, take care.